Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter Laz Connor and we are going to talk about The Tick Season 1 Episode 6, it is the mid-season finale, uh, so <laughs> full spoilers for the episode, it's called Rising uh, for the record, so we're going to talk about it and by the way I just I glanced over at the cast list and I don't think this was there before, I think you know obviously these cast lists in IMDb get updated with time and apparently the voice of Danger Boat is none other than Alan Tudyk, which is delightful news. Hmm. Doesn't surprise me. He does a lot of voice work. He does. Uh, it's always a, always a nice surprise to see Alan Tudyk's involved. Uh, so one of the big things we were we were sort of I wouldn't say concerned, but certainly curious about getting into this episode was like, oh, is it going to feel like it's actually like a, a proper breaking point? Is it actually going to feel like, oh, it's not the end of a season, but it does feel like a natural point to like have a cliffhanger <laughs> more than that later, and an actual point where it feels like oh, there's been a bit of a climax uh, to like what's happened so far, and to be fair, I actually think it mostly did. I I, th- I do as well. I think I could have done without the f- final scene. I actually think that takes away from uh, the kind of the ending moments for me. Um, I it didn't bother me. I I, I, can kind of... I I just think they had a much better ending for you know if we're going on a break. I think they had a much better ending at the end of the scene before. Uh, I think that's just purely based on your opinion because it's that's down to. Do you prefer a cliffhanger to leave you hanging for the for the next part? Like, like, are you a fan of when a season has a cliffhanger at the end of a season? It basically, yeah. is what what the question is. And if if you're not, then yeah, maybe it'll annoy you a little bit. But it's not. No, I don't know. I just I think the actual shot was more dramatic for a, an ending. Are you talking about when like text like standing there and the yeah the, yeah, yeah you know okay. the cameras looking down and all right, so up. it's still a cliffhanger. Then you're not really debating cliffhanger. You're you're just debating what. Sh- which shot, yeah. Literally which shot to leave on, like, okay. The, the final bit after that with Arthur, I don't think that was necessary. It wasn't needed. The... If anything, it was maybe more mysterious without it, even though it was kind of right, obvious. Right, I mean, I don't really like that last bit. It kind of takes away from the ending moment for me. That said, I do like the fact that he shows cliffhanger before it cuts to black. <laughs> yeah. I think it's hilarious, and I kinda, I'm glad they had it in there. I'm not gonna lie. I, I get what you're saying. I do. He 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 literally walks up to Arthur and goes cliffhanger, and then it cuts to black and the credits roll. That's pretty funny. I don't think in my in my decades of watching TV and movies, I don't think I've ever actually had a character, you know, in a meta way, announce a cliffhanger. No, so, no, it's it's definitely unique. So I'm um, going. So yeah, Arthur gets kidnapped at the end. The, but the reason why the episode actually works as a climax is because it actually does kind of conclude. A lot of little arcs that we've had over these first six episodes. It, oh, yeah. it concludes that Dot uh, basically has this realization. She actually wants to help. She doesn't like. She gets arguably kind of inspired by what the tick was saying to her last episode about actually being someone and being awesome herself. And she decides that she's going to go back and help patch up these criminals because she thinks, "Oh, I can be an informant. I can, I can learn things." And pass mm. it along, and obviously Tex kind of overhearing parts of this, and he's like, "Oh, she's on the team, great!" Like he's he's excited, but there's that really fun moment where Arthur's like, "No, I don't want you getting involved. It's dangerous. You could get hurt." And I love her reaction, and she just smiles and goes, "Yeah, I know how you feel," and hangs up. Yeah, it's like it's good because it it's kind of salty, but it's not super like it's a little bit salty to sort of like, "Yeah, that's how I felt with you getting involved. I was worried about you." But at the same time, it's like, she doesn't let it linger, she doesn't like rub it in to any great extent, it's just, no, no, I've made up my mind, and I didn't get to decide for you, you can't decide for me. Uh, right. So, you know, that was good. Uh, but of course, the big thing is that Arthur himself gets to have a heroic moment where he fully yeah, it's, it's... establishes himself as the sidekick. And it, it results in this great little montage of like, you know, this city's not had a superhero in a long time. And that's like public display of, you know, heroism. But the bus that you know, Ram- Ramsey's like shoots a grenade launcher at a bus because he's like, oh, I'll, I'll hurt him. I'll, I'll hit the tech where it hurts the, the civilians. And you know, the so, buses, so he goes right in the civilians. Yeah, and the bus is dangling over the over the uh, the overpass, and tech's holding on with his super strength. But Arthur has to go in and like actually get the people off. At first, he's just kind of standing at the the door, just like yeah, everyone come come. And then tech, you know, halfway through, he's like. Arthur, you're going to have to go on. Like, I'm going to be hold it for much longer. You're going to have to go in. He's like, in? Me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but sure enough, he does. And I was actually laughing because... So he thinks he's got everyone off. And, like, Tick says, right, 
people down below, bus is incoming, watch out. And he's like, you know, and I was like, there's going to be one last person, right? There's going to be yeah, one yeah. last. Yeah, and, and you know, I knew exactly what the person was going to say. And I thought, I, I thought it was going to be a kid. It's like my, my, my son, my daughter. It was actually even more extreme yes, than that. It was baby. My baby. Yeah. Right. But did you see the twist coming when, after he rescued it? I did not. To be fair, they actually had it in a, a little baby seat. So, yeah, you know. It, 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 it was unguessable. But obviously the moment that Riot really works though is that, you know, after she shouts that, the camera does the heroic slow track in, like in slow motion to Arthur as he turns and he stops being scared. He gets serious. He presses his button and the little goggles, the goggles click in, click into place. And it's, you know, it's basically the, the low budget version of the Iron Man hit, like face coming down. Like it it's, is, it's, that it's, moment. It's, it's the moment of, you know, pulling on the cowl. Yeah, exactly. And he runs in, and of course, you know the bus is going to go down, but then we're going to, he's going to fly up, holding the what yeah, we think at the yeah, time yeah. is a baby. You, so. you know exactly where it's going, but it works anyway. Oh, it's, it's great. But everyone's filming it with their phones, and it's like, the city's rejuvenated. You, know, you see Go and uh, Kevin, Tinfoil Kevin, and they're watching it, and they're kind of like, huh, he actually did yeah. something useful. We've got a superhero now. And you know, they're walking down the street in slow motion, and people are waving and celebrating them, and the Tick's basking in it. Arthur's kind of starstruck, or not starstruck, but like just you know, he's you know, he's he's in the headlights. He's caught Over in the well. headlights. Yeah, uh, but Tick's just like, ah, thank you, citizens. Yes, thank you. Yes, yes, I'm a superhero. Yes, so he can just, you know, still not do his whole thing. Uh, so because of that, I actually th- a it was a really good sequence. It played fantastically. But B, I actually think it just it works perfectly as the conc- sort of a mini conclusion to this part of the season. It actually does feel legitimately like it. It wraps. It, it does because you up, had so. you the, the whole thing was Arthur choosing to be a hero. Yeah. So yeah, you know, that's it. Like that's the end of this first arc. You know him, his reluctance to get involved, to actively choosing to go in and save someone. It, it genuinely feels that they did write this or plan it for this split, or at the very least, when they had the idea to split it. They, they go, oh, we've got a perfect moment for it. We'll split it there. Like, they actually, they, you know, they've, they've, whatever way around the decision-making went, it worked to say, okay, now this actually functions as a mini-ending. And Yeah. Obviously, there's still things open. We have the obvious cliffhanger where he's kidnapped. Uh, we have the threat of, of Superior, who we find out this entire project with the suit is to try and kill him. Uh, who, by the way, we see at the start is trying to, like, you know, help the big guy, the big naked man. Who's yeah, he, he, he is very Superman-esque, isn't he? Where he's like, no, let's talk to him. Yeah, but he, his laser eye vision has a, a taste because it, it, it heats up the coffee and he's like, oh, cinnamon cr- toast Pum- or whatever. It, it, pumpkin spice. Pumpkin spice, that Fries was it. can tell you don't drink. What? I couldn't remember what he said. <laughs> it's it's uh, pumpkin spice. It's only the most popular flavor from you know September for, uh, for the rest of the year. Is it? Yes. Cool. It's a big, it's a big deal, Pete. Come on, keep up. I've never tasted it. Never tasted pumpkin in general, actually. I was offered a piece of pumpkin pie once, and I just I was like, nah, you know what? Don't want it in my life. It's fine. No, I know what you're saying. It just it, it didn't sound appealing, you know. It just didn't sound appetizing. So it doesn't, does it? No. It's just, it's just, it's this it's this big orange thing that's just been like carved up. You know, you you've seen the insides of a pumpkin. You're like, I have. It's not that very doesn't pretty. look appetizing, does it? I mean, the, the opening title sequence to Halloween 2, the camera goes inside the pumpkin as it's, like, ripping apart, and it's just all these, like, you know, stringy it's parts and wet. It's sanguine, isn't it? Yeah, it's, no, nothing about it's appealing, so, you, you know. Halloween no. decoration, fantastic. Something that I want to eat. As, as so actual much. food, nah. 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 Uh, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> what was it? Yeah, so Superior's trying to deal with the big naked guy. He, he's, he even gives lip to the like the sergeant, the army general, whoever's there. It's like, no, 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 you will not fire upon him. I, he's a civilian too, and I will protect him. And he's he's kind of kind of right with him. Uh, it was funny because they set up a kind of idea. It reminded me a little bit of uh, Captain. Was it Amazing? I think it was Captain Amazing. I like Captain Amazing or Captain Awesome uh, from Mystery Men. Uh, which is a superhero comedy, but uh, he he and that has like sponsorship deals, and he had like you know like company logos all over him, which Superior doesn't so he's, have. So he's, yeah, but uh, but his his agent guy kind of says, oh, you've got a meeting with so and so. We'll push that back for the PR. So the fact they had an agent reminded me of that a little bit. Like it gave me that kind of impression where he's like, he's not just a superhero. He, he has an agent who's like. It's the same. It's the same way the dog was, you know, doing the written a book and was on TV. Yes, yes, the dog, the fantastic dog. That who, who can I can't forget, can we? 
Yeah. Uh, so so there was a whole, you know, which obviously was a bit more danger boat at the start. Uh, Overkill wasn't very happy about uh, Arthur's plan. Arthur basically wanted to take Ramses because he basically admitted that uh, the terror's alive because they shot him with like some truth serum. So they take him to the, you know, the Aegis, I think, I think the name a- of it is. Aegis, yeah. Aegis, uh, which is the, the superhero registration body, you know, this this yeah. government body that they, they, they deal with. But the, the building in their city is shut down because there's no heroes in the city, so they don't need to be here. Uh, it, seems, it seems like poorly thought out. Well, there's still villains. Like, surely the villains are still worth keeping track of. But you know. You'd think, but I don't give a shit about that. Yeah, apparently not. Uh, so he's just kind of watching from. He actually ends up phoning that. He gives all the information like, oh, yeah, the Danger Boat mistranslated. And so I fixed it. And then Danger Boat in the background is like, no, I fixed it. What are you talking about? Uh, but that's how we get the information about, oh, this is all, this is all a plot to kill Superior. Uh, so, you know, so, so there's some plot beats there uh, throughout that. Uh, not a whole lot of Danger Boat in this one. but uh, Not enough. That's, that's the biggest crime of this episode. Not enough Danger Boat. Uh, we did have. Obviously, we kind of mentioned all the dot stuff already. There was a little joke that I did like about uh, Arthur's mum, like trying to clean off the scorch marks, and she's yeah. like, "I wonder what guests did this. They were all downstairs. Like, what? What's, what's going on?" And she's you know scraping off the this like burnt bit of wallpaper. Um, but the other main thing that we had in the episode, of course, was Miss Lint, uh, who the cliffhanger we had last episode was that the terror showed up alive. And she's notably a little bit pissed in this episode because his whole thing is like, yeah, you're my right-hand person. Like, you know, if you looked like you were mourning me, it looked legit. The suckers bought it. Which, you know, it, that sentence is insulting her at the same time, which I just love. He yeah. doesn't care about how she feels at all. Uh, and it's basically, it's basically kind of like catching up. He, 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 he criticises her for like, I kind of expected you to kill, kill Ramses like after a year. Like, you know, fry him and then you would find out about me. But you just kind of softened and you've been doing nothing for the last like however many years uh which obviously upsets her she gets really pissed off blah 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 blah. Uh, my favorite moment uh, on this whole thing though is that he's like i've been keeping tabs on you i've been looking over you all these years and then like then he notices something he's like wait derek it derek that stole my wi-fi you married him and then yeah. so there's, there's a lot of moments and she's like wait a minute you said you'd been monitoring me for the last six like, however many years and he, and he just replies with well i did it at the start but you were kind of boring so yeah there you go. <laughs> I, I do love that you know like when derek walks in he just you know throws the darts at him <laughs> and she's like you killed him he's like no it's just you know, he's just paralyzed be fine an hour yeah my, fa- my favorite line of that whole thing was he's like see look he's foaming at the mouth that's a good sign terror's pretty funny honestly every character's pretty funny in their own one way like i don't think there's a weak link in the entire cast they've all made me laugh to a point definitely i I think arthur and dot less so but that's mainly because they're the straight people in the middle they're they're the the straight man the straight woman who are reacting off all the crazy people around them uh but they have the best character stories because they're the ones that have the arcs they're the ones that have the touching moments yeah they're the the human characters yeah and then everyone else like ticks hilarious uh, overkills, decently funny. In fact, actually, that line really cracked me up is when he takes off the mask in front of them, and Tick just goes, "Secret face," and then he goes, "Okay, just say a f- effing thing about my face or whatever." He's like, you know, he just, yeah. it just, oh, it cracked me up. It was like, shut up about your stupid secret identities. No one cares. Yeah. Uh, it was basically and obviously, the response. Danger Boat is the MVP of the show. Go on. Just in general, like oh, just in general. Okay, we're talking about characters yeah, thought, being the, the best. I'm just you, you. You were listing those. I'm like, I just want to make sure you don't overlook Danger Boat. We've mentioned. I feel Danger, like you might. We've mentioned Danger Boat repeatedly, but not in not in this sentence. You hadn't. <laughs> what I need to mention them in every single sentence. In a sentence about awesome characters, yes. <laughs> uh, we can have multiple awesome characters. It's fine. It's fine. We're good. Uh, but of course, uh, Miss Lynn uh, takes this to heart. All this. This. Uh, we'll call it a pep talk, although that seems a bit, bit kind for it. But she takes it to heart and she goes and kills Ramses. In fact, she basically fries his face off, which is kind of a nice little moment. Uh, I will say the visual effects were a little bit more spotty in this episode. There was yeah, a f- few. Yeah, like the bus and stuff. The bus, um, and then like when she, the actual frying of his face looked good, but then the, the, the smoke afterwards looked quite kind of obvious. Yeah. I think. With, with the bus, it wasn't so much when it was hanging over, it was when it was skidding off. 
Yeah. Honestly, though, like this is a show that can get away with kind of cheap looking effects. It kind of adds to the charm almost because it does yeah. have this kind of. You, you, you do excuse it a bit because it's kind of, yeah, it's been a bit fun, been a bit wacky. It's like, ah, whatever. Yeah. So, the, and honestly, as we've said before, the action scenes and the, the superhero scenes, despite the fact that the effects aren't the best things ever, are legitimately well done. They're well directed and well shot. And like this scene with Arthur making the choice to go back and save the baby, slash yeah. dog, uh, it was you know it was thrilling and it was a big moment for his character so the show and I, I keep saying this but it's surprising how well it actually is crafted it's not just a comedy like I thought it would be there's actually more right. to it than that so uh, by all means so no this was a great half season it was and I, I do think they knew about it you know earlier in production than we thought they knew that it was going to be cut mm. given that you know this seems like such a natural end point you know we literally have him shout cliffhanger which could have worked into a next episode still, but it feels particularly appropriate given the break. It does, yeah. Um, so I, I think that, you know, we, we heard about it quite late. And even, but I even think they the knew fact for a that, while. even after like, the big heroic moment, and we have the slow motion of them walking the street, and that this song starts playing, this kind of, this song, and the, 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 the chorus is something about, uh, like, loving their city or saving this city. Like, it's, it's, you know, yeah. it, it fits into the theme of what's going on, but it intercuts between them walking back victoriously, it intercuts between that and what Dot's doing now, and Miss Lint going to kill Ramsey's. Like, it inter- it's like this little montage of what all the characters have achieved in their arcs. Yeah, and, and, and like just like seeing people like Goat and Tim Fall Kevin, you know, reacting and seeing, you know, this is the effect that they've had on characters yeah. that we know. So, so the whole thing does actually feel... There's a lot of threads still open, of course. Uh, you know, we've learned about Superion being, ki- you know, a target of assassination. We've learned about these things. Obviously, Arthur's been kidnapped, but it does genuinely feel at the end of a, a little mini season. So, uh, <laughs> my one concern is that everything online tells me this is ten episodes, which would imply when we get it back, there's only going to be four. I'm hoping that's incorrect, and this was exactly half, and we get six again. But we'll I see. would hope so, but we're not expecting those till. I think early 2018. They've been early saying. 2018. I, I'm expecting uh, Marchish time. Yeah, I can see. It. I, I definitely expecting the first you know, quarter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, hey, right, earlier the better. Though. If they, they drop them in January, I will happily accept them in January. That's yeah, fine. yeah. I'm down for a little surprise drop. Yeah, that would be fine for by me. Um, so as much as yeah, I wish I had more to watch right now. It's like yeah, it kind of hurts. Uh, so. No, uh, solid show. I li- actually like this a lot. I'm surprised because I mean we like the pilot. We liked it enough to check out more, uh, but I think it's actually consistently gotten better throughout the, the episodes. Yeah. and I think you know at the start we had a, maybe a concern that well, is there going to be enough to talk about every episode? There's, there's a reason we don't typically cover comedies uh, beyond you know one episode because we don't want to just re- regurgitate jokes. Yeah, we do that a little bit, sure, but it's no, there's actually, there's actually you know, there's meat arcs and yeah, there's character me- development. It was beating the bone, so yeah. Uh, credit, credit where credit is due. Uh, I think it takes a pretty good show. It, it and packs a lot into its twenty or so minutes every episode. It does, uh, you know. And again, like some of the better streaming shows, it actually just alters its length depending on the episode. Like these last two were only about twenty-two minutes, but some of the earlier ones were like 27, 29. So you know, it'll be longer or shorter depending on what it's doing. Uh, yeah, it, it, it goes to its needs, not just because it can. Yeah, it doesn't just extend the length so they all match, which, you know, we've seen some shows do that. And yeah. and some to... shows go, oh, we want it to be as long as possible because it looks better. Because, you know, that, that's typically associated with, like, you know, premium cable shows where mm. they have long, longer episodes than the standard, just, you know, 42. One more thing I liked about that, that final scene with the terror. Right? Obviously, we had the cliffhanger moment, but we also had arguably some really dodgy product placement for Alexa. And funnily enough, I actually saw some people online talking about this who have Alexa in their house. Apparently this, uh, trig- set them off. this, this triggered a, a reaction from it. Uh, but, no, it was funny though, because as much as that's product placement, I did like the terror goes, uh, Alexa, play ominous music. It is product placement, like you say, but it's it's one of those instances of product placement done, done well, because it's, it's in the over-the-top ridiculous nature of the show. Yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. So and plus yeah. we have danger boat. So the idea of using Alexa later on is kind of a weird kind of wink wink. This is kind of as close as we've got so far. Yeah, <laughs> we've got Alexa, Alexa and but, Cortana, which apparently uh, have been talking to each other this week, which is scaring the shit out of everyone. Okay, that's. I have to say, it doesn't matter. You know, when like you're saying, oh, when it's on a show and and it, it sets off people's Alexas. I was listening to a podcast and they say, okay, Google sets off my phone immediately. <laughs> 
because if you say okay google from my phone it pops up with a oh, you know, main, you main, main does that as well yeah. yeah just it immediately sets it off pause the podcast do you know it's funny i was actually playing with that for the first time the other day i was just curious because notoriously these voice activated things don't work as well with like accents that you know they aren't used to so I, you know i'm throwing things at it and i was really impressed it was getting everything at, and i started throwing words at it that weren't technically real words you know when they were real things but like i said comicsology and it, it got it exactly right it took me mm. to comicsology and i was I'd like, hope alexa would get that one given that amazon owns them but yeah, well, this isn't an Amazon. This is just an Android. Phone. No, this is yeah, yeah, this is the Google. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, and I'm like, well, well played, Google. You're, you're, it's like it's like it could detect it enough, then it'll fill in the blanks itself to make sure it gets to the right thing. But I was Vo- impressed. Voice activation's come a long way. It has. I'm not quite ready to use it. Like I, I did it to see if it worked, but now now that I've yeah, I think using it, it properly, I'd feel like a dick. Yeah, see, see, I, I still feel more comfortable just tapping the thing a couple of times. Like that, 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 that doesn't mean, but. You know. But it works, so that's that's a big step up from where we were a few years ago. I, I I think I think people overestimate the appeal of being able to just tell tell it to do something because you, I think at least right now it, it feels a little bit stupid. And honestly, pressing a couple of buttons actually feels like less effort. But there are times where I feel like it's useful. You know, when I'm uh, I'm preparing dinner because I'm cooking a meal or doing a ah, washing sure, up or something. Okay. It's like. Maybe maybe, on, like maybe in those times when you can't quite reach the remote, and you're just like, oh, I'll just tell it to do it. <laughs> yeah, because you're a lazy shit, and it's like, ah, I could get up and, and overextend that extra two feet. Yeah, well, I, I hope I hope that was a collective it. you, and not specifically aimed at me. Oh, no, the, no, it, it included Do, do I have to you, remind so. you that you're the man who once told me that, no, I don't want to do that right now, because I'd have to lift my hand to reach the mouse? You, t- you said that to me once. I regret nothing. But no, uh, tech's really good, so I, I would highly recommend it to anyone. Although, if you're watching this review, you're, you know, you've probably watched it, because why would you watch a review that's got spoilers for, for episode 6 <laughs> if you've not watched you know, the rest be of the weird. show? It would be weird. Uh, but absolutely, uh, it's good stuff. I, can't, I actually am legitimately excited for the rest, and you know, when we get to the end of the year and we're doing our you know best new shows of the year, this, this is legitimately has a chance of being on that top 10. Yeah, that's going to be a hell of a list to make. It's, yeah, it was tough last year. It's going to be tough again this year. Uh, I will say this though, because we're covering less shitty pilots, I don't think we're going to be doing a, a worst ten of the year this year because I, I don't think we've done enough to actually do that. I, I'm not sure we have. No. It would basically just be, hey everyone, welcome to the worst shows of the year, Iron Fist. Bye guys, we'll see uh, you I next mean, time. You hated the mist. Oh sure, yeah sure, but you didn't watch that. I didn't, but I'll tell you what, no, that was atrocious. <laughs> it was pretty atrocious. <laughs> uh, but uh, we're, getting, we're veering off track here. So that, that is the tech uh, episode 6, the, the mid-season finale, which is weird for a streaming service to have a mid-season finale, but yeah, it's a thing now. Um, but then again, like, let's say they do this again next season, and because of that, we get six episodes every, say, six months, instead of waiting a year between... Right, like I say, that's the plan for Netflix's Voltron. So is, if so. this becomes a thing, uh, maybe I'm okay with it if it's structured appropriately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'd actually I'd heard from people who watched the new season of Voltron that it didn't feel like it was planned. I, I think they did split that one unintentionally at the time, but going forward, they know. Uh, that's so. fair, yeah, that's fair. Uh, but ho- hopefully, yeah, uh, maybe that becomes a consistent thing where we get you know six episodes of The Tick every six months. Um and maybe that's a nice bite sized chunk to get every every six months. So I don't know. Uh, but let us know what you think of the, the the half season that we've got so far. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us uh, on Twitter at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash TV. You can do that over there. But otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching. Keep watching TV. We'll see you next time. Have you got any vanilla?